Hello and welcome to this uh, video on creating template documents that you can use with our Excel integration for Maximizer CRM. In this video we'll have a look at how you can set up your templates uh, and many of the features that exist within the Excel integration. Uh, we probably won't look at the parts counting in this uh, set in this tutorial. Uh, which we'll probably cover in a separate uh, session. However, uh, at the end of this session you should be able to take a template that you already have and with a great deal of ease convert it into a template you can use with our Excel integration. So uh, let's pretend we have a template. We're just going to do a few simple things. We're going to have a document that says uh, it needs to know who the customer is. Maybe it would like to see the address. Uh, if I could spell it. And uh, I don't know what else we might want to know. It'll probably be enough for, to get us started. So um, when you set up these templates, then the thing you're going to be working with are the settings for the document. And looking down here, we have to decide how we want this document to work. What sort of default name do we want it to have when you save it back to Maximizer? And when you're using these settings, always look at the bottom here because it tells you exactly what that field's going to do. So um, we'll call this an example. Uh, and uh, do we want to save it to the address book? And what does that mean? Well, we need to tell Maximizer what our document works with. I'm going to say it works with cases. Uh, but it might be that I prefer the document still to be saved on the address book even if the information and everything else that it relates to goes with the case. Uh, normally it's better for the document to go with the opportunity or the case so um, I'm going to leave that on false. Uh, then we can decide whether we want to set up any document numbering uh, and when we want a prefix. So I think we will number our template. And that means that every time somebody uses the template they get a unique reference. Uh, and the reference is unique to you as a customer. Um, once you've set up the sequence that template has its own sequence of numbering. Everybody in your organization who uses it will automatically get the next number and it's really easy to do. Um, so uh, we'll give these a prefix of um, X and we don't need document revisions. Uh, in the previous tutorial we saw how you could create revisions of documents. Uh, this document doesn't need them, but we would like some leading zeros. We'll have six leading zeros to the number, so it'll appear as 000 something. Uh, and then we need to set up the number sequence. Now it might be that you have a key for the sequence, but usually you need to generate a new sequence. So just start off the new sequence put into here the lowest number that you want the sequence to start at. So we'll start at a thousand and then press the new sequence button again. And now the sequence is given a unique ID that will be saved into our template and from now on uh, the sequence numbers will just be generated uniquely to, to this document. Uh, we're not using the parts lookup at the moment so we can sk skip all of this section and then down at the bottom here we've got some information about the data we're going to post back to Maximizer uh, uh, including the document number. So for now we'll, we'll leave those, we'll come back to them in a second. We'll have a look at what else we might want to set up in our template. Well almost certainly we would like some merge fields. So if we click on the merge fields button then we'll get a fairly familiar looking merge fields picker. Uh, it's got the list of all the basic fields in Maximizer and this includes some special fields so you can have the name and address in a number of different formats just as a single field to make it simple we can have the client's name with uh, Mr. Mrs. so if we just select that one and then put it here and we'll have the uh, the address in well since we're going to work with this going and we'll have it in US format um, and if we need any of the user defined fields then they'll all be here and we can pick them off. Equally you can go and choose fields from the opportunity, the service cases, the user. So for example I might want to put um, the person who's filling in the sheets display name on here. That'll give us their display name. Uh, and if I am using the document numbering system then I can also get the document number so we'll put that at the top there. And that's it. Now we've uh, effectively we've, we've pretty much created a template at this point. Um, unless we want to set the template up so that it can write something back to Maximizer. Uh, what we'll do is um, I'm going to write something back to Maximizer. Uh, let's uh, 
let's not do that for the moment but if we did want to write something back to maximizer let's say we're going to have a total uh, we'll just have a total here and this is going to end up with some kind of number in it we want that to get written back to maximizer what we need to do is we need to define it as a range and the names have to follow a set number at the moment in this version you can write back 10 in here we've got all the ranges that you're going to write back and we need to tell it which field that's going to get written into so um, when we were working with the opportunities in the previous demonstration um, this was set up to write back to the revenue field or to write back to one of the fields on the opportunity um, we'll probably make this a little bit quicker at some point but for now since you only do it when you're doing the template what you can do is you can bring up the list of writable fields uh, and then looking at the fields that you might want to write back uh, let's see what we've got um, well there's an alphanumeric field that's probably not doing anything else it's a historical field from Maximizer I'm just going to use it as an illustration um, if we click on the writable list then it shows me only those fields that we can write back and this is still one so I'm just going to select it for a moment and then I'm going to copy well, in fact I'm going to cut the name of that and I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it in the setting against the CRM1 range. Now that that's done the system knows that whatever value is in CRM range 1 should get written back to this address book field when you update Maximizer. So that's fairly straightforward. Um, having said I wasn't going to do that, it's so simple I've done it anyway. So there we go. Uh, it's all set up. So um, all we need to do now is save this as a template. So this will get um, save as uh, and you're going to save it as uh, an Excel template, so uh, Excel template, uh, and this one is going to be my uh, this is going to be my example template. Could be whatever you want it to be, and that's it. So now we can close it. We've actually created the template, and all the settings to do with it are inside the document. So at this point, you want to test your template to see how it works. So we'll create a new document from My Templates and in the My Templates we've now got a new example template. Pull up the copy of the document. Because this one works with cases I can now choose a case. I can choose to what I'm looking for, maybe just unresolved cases. Uh, have a quick look. Oh look there's one here at Ansley to do with a faulty product. We'll make this to do with that case. So now up here in the top right hand corner I've got the case information showing is associated with this workbook. I can pull in the details. Now one of the things I should have done, I didn't really do, was make sure that my cells were set to a sample, uh, sensible size for displaying something like an address. So my workbooks come out a little bit strange at this point, but that's not really a problem. So now I've pulled in the details. I've got Joe Napoli. I've pulled in the name of the person the case is to do with and the name and address. Uh, and um, what we need to do now is number our document using the numbering system we set up. So we've got X001000 as the first document. And all we'll have to do is save a copy back onto the uh, record in Maximizer. It's going to be uh, X001000. And that's it. It's done. We've saved, we, So now we've actually created a completely new template. Um, and then we've used it to create a document. The only other feature that uh, is on the toolbar that we haven't really used so far is the view and address book and if you click on that then it will take us off to uh, Val uh, Wiley Kendall's um, record in Maximizer just just like, actually he's around the other way, he's Kendall Wiley. Ah, oh well. Anyway, it'll take you off to his record in uh, in Maximizer, uh, uh, just the same way as pressing View and Address Book in Maximizer's Outlook integration. Uh, and that's about it. Unless you actually want to use the parts counting feature, um, there are not many more things that you'd want to configure. Just have a quick look back. We can see again that uh, we gave the document a title, which we saw when we saved it. We gave it a document prefix, which we saw when the document was numbered. We gave it some leading zeros, which came up here. The template now has a unique sequence numbering, so everybody in the company who uses the template I've just created uh, will get the next number in that sequence when they number their documents. Uh, we didn't use the parts lookup in this case, and we told it to write back uh, the value 1000 in this cell here to that cell. And if we went and had a look in Maximizer, I'm sure it'll be there.
Uh, and so uh, that's all we really want to show you in this uh, quick tutorial to creating your own templates. Um, we will have another look at setting up uh, parts numbering uh, in a separate session. Um, thank you very much for your time.